Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's so good to see you here. And it looks like we're a little low this morning. Maybe some more will filter in. But we're so glad to see you. Isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Oh, it's so refreshing. So refreshing. I just, I'm just so excited just to come around the corner and just see the church. You know, I've been by here since. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing we're going to have church is awesome. You know, Yay. just pumps me up. All right, so good to see you this morning. Let's take our hymnals and turn to 259 and sing this song. It's always a great song to praise the Lord with this song. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. And uh, everything he does is great. So let's stand and praise him this morning with this, this song. 259, to God be the glory. saved. And I believe every believer here has that same wonderful, thankful heart. Lord, Because we know we're just sinners. But we're thankful to be saved by your grace. We're thankful for your promises and your precious word. Lord, um, we just pray that this morning we would be challenged by your word. That we would also be encouraged by uh, this tribute that we're giving to Luann. And I know, Lord, she's in your presence. We're thankful for that, that she's not suffering anymore. So bless that time, too, because ultimately she would want to give you the honor and the glory. <clears throat> so we thank you for this opportunity. Please bless our service. We know you're here with us, Lord, because of your promises. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. And uh, I know I knew we were going to be a little low after our second shutdown. The first one was six weeks long, and this one was uh, uh, only three. And praise God, it was only three. Amen? But uh, I just had the opportunity to meet uh, Brother Rob Hoffman and his wife, Susan, I haven't met yet, but I'll meet you in a little bit. It's good to have some visitors with us. Amen? Amen. Wonderful to have you folks. They'll give you a packet there to... To, uh, that we'd like for you to have. And uh, we're doing something different today. We were, we were scheduling to do this back on October 25th, and because of the illnesses that kind of hit us, uh, and we didn't know it would be three weeks, but it ended up being three weeks, and it was for the best. But we're back at it, amen? amen. We're here to, to uh, rejoice. But we had originally planned, and this is what we want to do this morning, is do a tribute. And I know that some of you new folks 
didn't know Luann. You'll get a little glimpse of her, but to hear the angelic voice of her singing in a few moments, I'll introduce that. And then we have also some tributes that are going to be talked about with her. Now, I'm going to still preach. Don't worry. Uh, we're not going to diminish that at all. Like the Bible says, diminish not a word. Amen? We'll still get into the Word of God. Amen. And uh, But I, I just want to um, begin by starting this tribute this morning uh, with a, a little video. So I'm going to ask Judd if you will flip those lights off right there. And I'm going to flip these off. But before he begins it, I want to turn the camera and see if we can get it. Let me just have a word of explanation. If you didn't know this, Luann was in Metron. She was the first person that died of COVID there. She was in Metron for three, um, for 12 years. And, um, okay, Brother Sam, go ahead. Say hi, Luann. Oh, my friends at Camp Lake. This is Luann, and I sure do miss you all. Come and see me. Come and see Come me. Come and see me. That would make me very happy. We're having a party today. We're having sort of a party today. Because it's my birthday tomorrow. Getting younger every year. <laughs> Up here, anyway. <laughs> okay, you can turn them back on now. Thank you. Before you start that song, uh, let me just explain something. <clears throat> Luann and Liz and Penny were here for many decades in our church. They were loaned to us from Sparta Baptist, and we never gave them back. <laughs> and uh, wonderful, wonderful servants of God. This background music is Bob Ruth, who is playing an accordion as she sings this song. The significance, Bob and um, Lily and Ruth were one of the first families in our church. They're charter members of our church. And related to some of you, I know Sam was telling me that he's related to the Ruths and, of course, to Luann. So go ahead and start that song while I double check this camera a minute. <clears throat>
miss that voice, don't you? The eyes of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Dorothy, <coughs> can you come on up and share what you have for us? You know, Luann played the piano here, and her mother, Liz, played the organ for decades. I think it was about 35 years. And I believe that recording was in the early 70s. Yeah. That was a long time ago. Hi. Luann was a very awesome woman of God and a very dear friend to me. <clears throat> when my daughter Rachel heard of her passing, she wrote this tribute to Luann, and I want to read it for you today. <clears throat> I don't want to sensationalize her story, but rather I believe Luann's story is bringing glory to God right now and will continue to do so. Yes, her story will bring a lot of attention to Corona, Alexa, and the nurse, nursing home she lived in for over a decade. But there's a bigger story to tell. Luann's story is ultimately about Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus saved Luann's soul. Jesus lived in Luann's heart. Jesus gave Luann a holy calling and purpose to serve God all of her days. Jesus led Luann and her family to the church I grew up in for many decades ago. <clears throat> Jesus introduced Luann to me first as a Sunday school teacher, but also as my friend and almost mom. Jesus worked through Luann in teaching me the scriptures, encouraging me to play the piano, and showing me how to use my creativity could be used to glorify God. Today and every day, my soul will magnify the Lord because he gave me the incredible gift in the person of Luann Dagan. I miss her so much, but I know I will see her again. <clears throat> I cannot wait to see how God will get the glory for himself as a result of this terrible tragedy. And who knows how many souls will come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior because of Luann's life and testimony. Rest in peace, good and faithful servant of the Lord. <clears throat> John chapter 14, 1 through 6 says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, <clears throat> that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. How can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Praise God. Thank you for that. Amen. 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 We divided up our tribute to Luann into two parts because we have a lot more. And there's one more song she's going to be singing, It Will Be Worth It All. We'll be having that song right before the message this morning. But I want to take a moment... Because, you know, this week was Veterans Day. Um, we want to just recognize our veterans. You know, our church has a military display. If you haven't looked at that, uh, be sure to look at that. Some of those uh, dear folks have already gone home to be with the Lord. Uh, many of them are still, some of them are still serving in the military. I don't think there's anybody on the board that still are. There might be one or two, but uh, we love the military at Camp Plague Baptist Church. Amen. If you've served in the armed services, would you stand? Just want to... Thank you, Mr. Hoffman. Anyone else? I'm glad we had a visitor that came that served in the armed services. What branch were you in, brother? I was in the Navy. In the... Yeah, Naval Aviation Air Traffic Control. Very interesting. I, I love that. We have... Uh, Bert's dad was in the Navy, and, and he's not able to be here today, and... Uh, we know usually we have enough to have several people standing, but as we build back up, and uh, but we're glad to have you folks with us, and thank you for your service to our country. Let's give him a hand. I just, I can't get over the sacrifices that so many people led so that we can stand up here and do this and come to this place. Uh, the freedoms that we uh, express and, and get to do. 
because people have paid the ultimate sacrifice, or at least we're willing to, and serve our country. Thank you so much. Um, I don't. I want to just share with you that because of this recent um, upswing of COVID, we're not taking the offering. We put the plates in the back, and we're we're going to have a greeting. But um, if I've shaken your hand, I, I I don't. I didn't mean to forget. Um, forgive me. I'm not sick anymore, but. Uh, I don't want to scare anybody, but we're just trying to take all the precautions. You know, we care for each other very much. We love each other. We're so glad to be able to be back in church. And uh, we have a lot more that I'm sure will come back next week and the weeks following. We're looking forward to uh, just to mention a couple of things. My brother down in Georgia it has COVID and he has pneumonia. He's in the hospital. And uh, my mom is not doing good in the nursing home. So I appreciate your prayers for my family. Uh, Heather asks prayer, continued prayer for her uh, as she's recovering from the knee surgery. So, uh, and I know too, it's today is deer season's opener. Some of our folks are um, traveled and are up hunting. Pray for their safety. All right. But as far as announcements, we are going to be back to church tonight. I love Sunday night services, don't you? And we're going to be back, hopefully sharing some testimonies. I'll be in Second Corinthians, and we'll be in chapter five this time. And so we will be continuing our study there. And uh, we're not having our midweek service yet uh, with the, the certain folks that have uh, ministries there, need to get well, need to get past their quarantine. And we will pick that up soon, uh, probably a week, maybe after Thanksgiving. I'm not sure. You're probably going to have your Thanksgiving dinner, aren't you, with the team? We, we would love to, yeah. Uh, you're free to have that, Pastor Mark. Okay. Even if we don't meet, the rest of us don't meet here. But uh, we'll be announcing it and letting you know when we get back and we're um, firing on our all eight cylinders. I would like to have that Sunday school next week. Now, I did upload a lesson this morning out of Mark uh, chapter 3. So if you want to check that out on the church's YouTube channel, I shared some thoughts there. So that was uploaded this morning. But next week, I hope to have regular Sunday school. But be listening for a call and we'll let you know. And so that will uh, handle that. So I just wanted to say that. And um, Pastor Mark, what's next? Let's have our um, our greeting. Yeah, it's a greeting time. And then that, yeah. It's a greeting time. Um, again, with the COVID issues, don't feel like you have to shake people's hands. But we do like to greet one another. So in our church, we love to do that. Before we do that, let's check our handles. Turn to 674 so you're ready for it. Because that's the song that we'll be playing during our greeting, and we'll come back and sing sing it when we come back from the greeting. But let's stand this morning and greet one another Amen. and make everyone feel welcome here at Camp Lake this morning.
Jari Lee. I'm going to scan and span. We have some visitors. Wonderful to have some visitors today. That's our regular crew. But Pastor Mark is talking to them right there. The lady, I can't see the man right now, but the names are Rob and Susan Hoffman. And she's from Sparta. I don't know her maiden name, but the Hoffmans. They lived in New Jersey. They went to Moody. They lived in New Jersey, then they lived in Georgia, and then they bought a, a house in Sparta. So I'll find out more information. But we did start having our tribute to Luann today, and um, we have more coming. So, a little low this morning. Thomas couldn't come because little Gideon came up with a fever. together it's great we need to move on so let's find our seats and let's sing number one you know, 674 in my life lord we can sing as we as we get to our seats testimonials and he had several of them. Um, Luann had such an impact on this church's um, children's ministry. Mm -hmm. I think the two people that had the greatest impact on this church's children's ministry, uh, number one would be Luann and number two would be Berta Davis <coughs> and their desire to reach children for Christ. And uh, I'll tell you, we had some amazing vacation Bible schools. <laughs> Uh, uh, just the, the not so much. Um, it, it's it's we we we're not about numbers, okay? If five kids got saved, if one kid got saved, that was a blessing, amen. Mm -hmm. But uh, we many times would see as many as 20, 25 kids get saved. But her creativity, uh, her drive, her love of children, and I think you're going to hear about that in these testimonials. Yeah, as Pastor said, she reached so many, so many children for Christ, and and the length of her ministry is such that most of those children now are young adults, and uh, some of them still live in areas. Some still attend our church here. Um, some are still in Michigan. Some are out of state. But um, we put a call out just to, to see if anybody wanted to give a testimonial, and uh, uh, the impact of her ministry was shown in the response. We have, I think, we have eleven of them here. I came back. People who wanted to say something about the way. None of them are really long, but they're all special, so we didn't want to leave any of them out. Amen. <clears throat> all right? Uh, the first one was from Justin and Kristen. Of course, they were separate, and they weren't here, but of course, then they got married. They were a married couple. The Wan always made everything fun for us kids. We both remember being ex excited for Kids Corner every Sunday night. Yeah. And getting a sticker or Tootsie Roll for finishing our activity sheets. Those activities helped us pay attention and follow along to sermons, much more as a child. Now that we have kids of our own, we use some of those activities with our own kids. There was no denying how much she loved us kids, and her joy for teaching us helped us grow spiritually. Thank you, Justin and Kristen. Amen. From Taylor Bronkema, he wrote this. What Luann meant to me. She was such a sweet lady an awesome Sunday school teacher. She kept me in line when I got out of line, which was only a few times. <laughs> One thing I never forget that she told me was, when we sang, I didn't like to sing because I didn't know the words most of the time and couldn't sing. She told me just to lip, lip the word watermelon. She said it would look like I would be singing. And I thought, wow. I remember that she could play the piano by ear and was really good at it. She was always so happy to see you, especially at Sunday school. Luann was such a sweet lady and definitely had an impact on my life in a great way. 
She was an awesome lady. Thank you, Caleb. A text from Judd Brockema. The main thing that I remember about Luann is her doing the Lord's Army. Mm -hmm. That was always a fun time and something we look forward to. That was Judd. A text from Hannah. Joseph, who's here today. I only got to be in her class for a part of a year. I remember her teaching kids choir, and I enjoyed that. I also remember when I was younger that I helped her water the piano, and that made me feel special. Remember, we used to have an old, old um, <clears throat> piano here that had a, had, a, had a basin in it to keep the water in, so it, would, it, it was like a humidifier to keep the piano in a, and there'd be a light come on when the water got low, and she'd ask some of the kids to help her water the piano, she said. <laughs> when I was older, Miss Dorothy brought some of us to visit Luann in the nursing home. She was a sweet lady. We got this text from Joshua Yates. Luann was one of the, the most influential people God used in my spiritual growth. People will often look at younger children <clears throat> with little to no interest, and often never even considered taking the time and effort to teach them the things of God. Luann was the complete opposite. She loved children and loved teaching them to love God. She made the Bible come to life and made learning about God exciting. Young people need that. They need to see authentic Christianity from their earliest years. I am so thankful to have had Luann in my life. She encouraged me and challenged me to walk with the Lord at a very vital age in my life. Only God knows the vast impact she has had, not just on me, but also on every child she taught and loved. That was Josh. I got an email from Tim Yates. Outside of my parents, Luann is likely the person who had the biggest influence on not just my childhood, but on the entirety of my life. She had a way of teaching children that drew us in as she helped us understand how great our Savior is mm -hmm. and how scary our enemy. There are still times in my life when something will remind me of her, and I am always left smiling. In and out of her children's class, it was easy for me to see and know that she loved me and the Lord immeasurably. I have had no doubt that she will have many rewards to cast at the feet of her Savior. That was from Tim. The next text was from April Peterline, who is with us today. Luann had a huge impact on my life. I'll never forget the fun Juniors for Jesus events that she would plan for us. Her VBS programs were so fun and exciting. She inspired me with her musical talents. I loved hearing her play the piano. There was no doubt that Luann loved each of us kids at Camp Lake. She showed us love in so many ways throughout the years, including when I went to college. She often sent me mail, often that helped me feel more connected to my church family, though I was a thousand miles away. Luann was talented, loving, and servant-hearted. I will be forever grateful, forever thankful, for her godly influence on my life. That was from April mm -hmm. Peter Life. Mm -hmm. Next we've got one from Sarah Yates. Sarah Crockett, excuse me. <laughs> Luann was a great teacher, and she meant a lot to me. I can't put into words how much she meant to me. That was from Sarah. Then we got a text from Lizzie Jones, who's here today. Luann was such an amazing person. I am so blessed to have been able to know her. She was always so joyful, faithful, and kind. She was an awesome Sunday school teacher. She knew how to get us excited about learning about God and His truth. She would motivate us to do our very best. And she put a focus on teaching us how to live the Christian life to please God. One highlight every year would be her Lord's Army program. We would learn all about being a good soldier for Christ. We would memorize verses, songs, the different pieces of armor from Ephesians 6, and so much more. The more we learned, the higher rank we would earn. We would pinch shoulder ranks onto our clothes when we got to class. 
It made it so exciting to learn because we look so forward to being promoted to the next rank. Now I can never read Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 without thinking of Nguyen. She also cultivated my love for music. She was my very first choir director. She had a great voice and such a love for us children. I had so much fun learning music with her. All in all, she was an amazing, godly woman. I can't think of one bad thing I could say about her. She demonstrated her love for her church family every time I saw her. I am so thankful she was a part of my life. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lizzie. Then we got a text from Isaac Tyson. It's Pastor's son, by the way. <laughs> Luann Dagan was a huge blessing in my life. She had a real gift for teaching us children. She always emphasized how important it was for us to know our Bibles. She drilled us on the books of the Bible and the various crowns mentioned in Scripture. When I went to boot camp, she wrote me many letters of encouragement. Every time I visited her in Cedar Springs, she was always so sweet and thankful for the visit, even though she was in such a tough situation. I am thankful that she is no longer suffering, Amen. and I have no doubt that she has received her crown. That was from Isaac. Thank you, Isaac. Then, lastly, a text from Rachel Oniku. I remember Luann always at the piano and wanting to play like her. Her ministry of song was a blessing. The ability to be in the kids' choir was a joy. I loved coming to practices and singing our songs for church. The Lord's Army program is what I mostly remember about her Sunday school class. I am so thankful for it and all the work she asked of us. Participating in that program every year in her class truly helped to ingrain me <clears throat> quite a few biblical things, ingrain in me quite a few biblical things. The theme song has also stuck with me through the years. Whenever I think of her class, I can hear her beautiful voice boldly singing of being a soldier in the King of Kings army. That is a sound I, I hope to never forget. And now I have no doubt that she's using that beautiful voice to this day, praising our Lord and Savior as she sits at his feet. Thank you, Rachel. Those are the testimonies that were given for the land. You can see she had quite an impact on uh, a lot of young people in our church, and there's much more. I, mean, I was so pleased with all that came in. Amen. Go ahead, Another Brother Sam. It will be worth it all. Amen. <laughs>
I tell you, those uh, recordings don't do her voice justice. She has such an angelic voice. Amen? Mm -hmm. I wanted to tell you a couple of things real quick. But you can turn in your Bibles to Jeremiah 35. Um, Liz and Penny and Luann lived together there in Sparta over by the water tower. Of course, Luann's dad died when, of a heart attack when she was like eight years old. And that was quite an interesting home sometimes. I know they had their times, but boy, could they get laughing. And one day they told me a story that got me laughing so hard. <laughs> they had cats, and the neighbor's pet rabbit, unbeknownst to them, the rabbit had died and the neighbors had buried it, okay? But one of their cats had dug it up and brought it over, and they didn't know, so they cleaned it up and put it back in the cage of the neighbor's cage because they thought their cat had killed the rabbit. So they put that cat back in the, I mean, that rabbit back in the cage. And their neighbor said, it was a miracle. The rabbit's been resurrected. <laughs> they didn't have the heart to tell them that, of course, they found out it was actually dead. They couldn't understand how that rabbit got out of the ground and back in the cage. And they never <laughs> filled it in, but... They had some uh, interesting times there in that home. And uh, keep praying for Penny. She still lives in that home. You know, she's lost both of her legs. And, and uh, I appreciate, Dorothy, all the things you've done to help Penny. Liz was such a wonderful mother. I still miss hearing her on that uh, organ. I tell you, they just really made beautiful music together. And there were some songs requested that I couldn't find. When um, Luann and Penny would sing together and their mom playing some awesome songs there. The one that uh, Luann would sing, uh, Sweet Little Jesus Child. Oh, I love that at Christmas time. But there were, we were trying to find some of these songs. and We just did the best we could. These, these two came from Lu, um, Lee. And uh, so, but uh, I want to tell you one more quick story if you've got your Bibles open. But we had this piano this is not the watered one, okay? We had this piano donated to us by Mark Bristol's boss. And I said, hey, it's going to be fun to switch these pianos out without Luann knowing it, okay? And so we had a moving company come and get the old one. They brought that one, and they took the old one out of here. And we hid back there and had a camera running. My problem was I couldn't find that tape. I wish I could have shown it to you. Uh, that was so long ago. It was, it was long before she had her strokes. But she comes in. It was hilarious to watch her face. She's looking around. Everything is different. The seat was different. And it finally dawned on her. This was a totally new piano. It was quite a... a penny was in on it. But we, had, we got a, a joy out of tricking her that day. And uh, she sure could play that piano. Amen. Mm -hmm. So many more things could be said about the impact that Luann had on our church. And we, we were wanting to do this a long time ago, and uh, we kept having to put it off with COVID and then this now recent shutdown. But um, we might have some things like this in the future again, some of her songs, if I can find them, because they are a blessing. Turn in your Bibles this morning to Jeremiah 35. Now, I do intend to go further in my study through Psalm 119. Uh, we've gone through, I think, 14 of the 22 uh, passages, uh, segments, and I will start that again, Lord willing, next week and do a couple of weeks before I get into some Christmas messages. But I just wanted to take a time out this morning for a, a unique passage, a fairly interesting passage in a lot of ways. Um, I, I thought it would be good to, to preach about someone that that the Lord took note of. I, and I don't know that anyone impresses God, okay? Because he is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and higher than the heavens, according to Hebrews 7. We know he is sinless and perfect. And when you talk about mankind, he's, he knows what is in man. But once in a while, and to memorialize a person, he will put their story in the scripture. And that will memorialize them forever. Amen. <laughs> Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And so we're going to talk about the Rechabites. And um, if that's the right way to say it, John and Dab is the, is the father of these uh, Rechabites. He is the son of Rechab, but the father of the Rechabites that we will talk about. But the whole purpose of it today 
Uh, you might say, oh, you're preaching this message to demonize liquor. Um, I will always jump on that bandwagon and always uh, take time to demonize liquor, okay? Amen. I'm always against that, but that's not the purpose of this message. And so I'm not trying to do that with that because there are other things that they were prohibited from uh, that would not be wrong. And so, and there are some aspects of drinking wine that aren't wrong because we know the word wine, it can mean a clump of raisins, it can mean fresh grape juice as well as fermented. So uh, we're not trying to focus on that as much as the word obedience today. And that is something I want you to get out of this message uh, is this word obedience. You might not find it in the passage, but it's the idea of it. And let's bow uh, for a word of prayer. Father, I just pray, Lord, that we might see how you share this story for a reason. Maybe it's to shame the people of Judah. Uh, maybe it's to spur them on. You knew and you know what they're going to do. And so the same with us. Lord, you know our hearts. You know uh, our patterns of thinking and you know what is in us, whether we are um, serious about serving you, uh, whether we are playing church, you know our hearts, Lord. And I pray that your spirit would convict us if there is a shortcoming of any kind. And Lord, help us to compare ourselves uh, not only to the Rechabites here, but also to the people of Judah uh, and their shortcomings. And, and honest, do an honest appraisal of ourselves. And ask ourselves, do we obey your word? I pray that you would just speak to us through it this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Just another quick note before um, we, we go further. Jonadab is the key man we're going to talk about. Just a little background about him in 2 Kings 10. He was a man that Jehu uh, came upon and said, are you with me? Is your heart right like my heart? He goes, yes, it is. And, he grabbed him and pulled him up in the chariot. He was part of a process of eliminating Baal worshipers. He said, well, I thought, and you might think, I thought Elijah took care of all them on the Mount Carmel. Well, he did kill 450 Baal worshipers, but that wasn't all of them. And even at that time, Jezebel's still alive. But this man, Jehu, had a zeal to serve God, and they went through purging the land of Baal worshipers. And this man, uh, Jonadab was part of that, just to get that understanding. I want you to see, number one is the test of the Rechabites. Number two is their tradition. We'll talk about that. Number three is the trouble that Judah is in because of their disobedience. And number four is the testimony of the Lord concerning the Rechabites. And if I don't mention those points again, that won't matter. The most important thing is the word of God. The word which came unto Jeremiah from the Lord in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, saying, Go unto the house of the Rechabites and speak unto them, and bring them into the house of the Lord, into one of the chambers, and give them wine to drink. Then I took Jehazaniah and the son of Jeremiah, the son of Habazaniah, and his brethren and all of his sons, and the whole house of the Rechabites. And I brought them into the house of the Lord, into the chamber of the sons of Hanan, the son of Igdalia, a man of God, which was by the chamber of the princes, which was above the chamber of Masiah, the son of Shalom, the keeper of the door. And I set before the sons of the house of the Rechabites pots full of wine and cups. And I said unto them, Drink ye wine. But they said, we will drink no wine. I wanted you to see this test uh, that God was doing. He told Jeremiah to take them and do this. That God was performing this test on them. And, uh, you know, sometimes God tests our faith, doesn't he? Uh, he it's his right to do so. He, uh, the Bible tells us he doesn't tempt us with sin, but he does test us. And I think this would be more of the classification of a test. Because he knows what they're going to answer is going to be. And so they definitely passed when they said, we will drink no wine. For Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, commanded us, saying, Ye shall drink no wine, neither ye nor your sons forever. Amen. That's interesting. Now, you know, I, I have some contrast to share with you when we get down further, but it is amazing this statement that was made, forever. Neither shall ye build house, nor sow seed, nor plant vineyard, nor have any 
but all your days ye shall dwell in tents, that ye may live many days in the land where ye be strangers. That ye have thus have we obeyed the voice of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, in all that he hath charged us to drink no wine all our days, we, our wives, our sons, nor our daughters, nor to build houses for us to dwell in. Neither have we vineyard, nor field, nor seed. But we have dwelt in tents and have obeyed. There's that word right there. And have obeyed. And done according to all that Jonadab, our father, commanded us. But it came to pass, when Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up into the land, that we said, Come, let us go to Jerusalem for fear of the army of the Chaldeans and for fear of the army of the Syrians. So we dwell at Jerusalem. Well, let me just talk a little bit about this tradition that was started by this command by Jonadab. Uh, one of the times that, that we were there in, in Jerusalem, we were up on the Mount of Olives, excuse me, and um, looking back over the city, and I, it was just enthralling to stand in that spot and see that eastern gate all blocked up and, and realize Jesus is going to come back literally and light off of his horse and touch the Mount of Olives, and it's going to split, and he is going to go through that eastern gate, mm -hmm. uh, even though they have blocked it up. But I was standing there, and I noticed off to the side a horse in a, like a tar paper shack and tents and and uh, you know uh, tarps and uh, I had said to Les Les Potter I said I said who are these these people they're they're squatters he goes oh no those are Bedouins those are Bedouins they have them in places throughout Israel they are uh, they are nomadic peoples that live all over the the Middle East but especially in Israel they they live in the south they live around Jerusalem and those are Bedouins and I thought it was interesting to see I mean I didn't really see any people they were in their enclosure. But they had a, a donkey or two and a horse there. And they were closest from me to that door of the um, room there in the corner as I was up on the hill looking down. And, and I just remember asking him about it. It just kind of struck me as kind of interesting. So I had that close of a firsthand experience with Bedouins. And we'll see how that might come into play as we read the rest of this. But their tradition. It didn't just involve wine, but building houses. There's nothing wrong with building houses. Uh, there's nothing wrong with drinking grape juice. You know how I feel about liquor. But just to point this out, there's nothing wrong with cultivating vineyards. There's nothing wrong with these things we've all done. We have houses. We have places. But they were given a commandment by their father. You will not do this. You will not do that. You will not do that. And verse 10 says, and have obeyed. Let's read on. Look at 12. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying... Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Go and tell the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Will ye not and see, receive instruction to hearken to my words? Saith the Lord. I think that this emphasis is their testimony as we've obeyed. And then he turns it around on them. He says, Will ye not hearken to receive my words? The instruction of my words? Um, Dr. Trying to think of his name right now, Chuck Missler. I like some of his messages, and uh, he's he's gone now, but he's written some interesting books, and uh, I like his preaching. Several pe preachers I get to hear, but he made a, an interesting. Um, I don't know if it was him or Chuck Smith. They made interesting contrasts. They said, "Here is a fallible leader versus a holy God." They obeyed this fallible leader. Think about that. Um, Jonadab spoke once. That's an interesting thing to think about. Once. All he had to do was say it once. And for 300 years, from the time that he said that to the time that they, that they were tested, and they passed that test, by the way, tested in the Lord's house. Here, drink wine. He said, no. 300 years. He spoke once, and they obeyed. Um, this is temporal. The drinking of wine, the building of houses, the planting of a vineyard, the planting of seed. We're talking about temporal. God is concerned with the eternal, is he not? God is concerned with the eternal. And yet, they didn't get it. They couldn't get that. I'm talking about the people of Judah. 300 years they obeyed. 
Judah is about to be punished. And the Rechabites, we're going to see as we get to the end, how they are rewarded. And there's an interesting reward the Lord mentions there. So we'll look at that. So let's see in chapter um, 35, 12 and 13, we see the uh, trouble that Jerusalem is facing. It says in 14, the words of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, that he commanded his sons not to drink wine are performed. For unto this day they drink none, but obey their father's commandments. Notwithstanding, I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but ye hearken not unto me. I have sent also unto you my servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, saying, Return ye now every man from his evil way, and amend your doings, and go not after other gods to serve them. And ye shall dwell in the land which I have given you and to your fathers, but ye have not inclined your ear, nor hearkened unto me. You know, it makes me think the Lord could have been standing right in that same area where I was looking down when he had that great compassion and he wept over Jerusalem. And he says, how many times would I have gathered you as a hen gathers her chicks? And ye would not. Mm. How many times? And ye would not. The contrast is stark. He only spoke once, Jonadab. The Lord, over and over, prophet after prophet, over and over. It's pretty sad, isn't it? Mm, yeah. But ye have not inclined your ear, nor hearkened unto me. But because the sons of Jonadab, the, the uh, son of Rechab, have performed the commandment of their father, which he commanded, been, but this people have not hearkened unto me. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem all the evil that I have pronounced against them, because I have spoken unto them, but they have not heard. And I have called unto them, but they have not answered. Now I know this is not to make light of that, but it's kind of funny when you're talking to a little kid. You know how kids have a way of just kind of like ignoring you when they don't want to hear what you're saying? I've watched that with my grandkids. I watch my children speak to their children and tell them to do something, and there's just this purposeful ignoring that's going on until it gets more intense. Um, do I need to take you in the back room? Uh, I, I didn't know. You remember that statement? I didn't hear. Yeah, sure, right. That's the game. That's the game Judah has played. And what is the Lord saying here in verse 17? I will perform. I will do all that I have said that I would do. And we know that happened. They were taken captive for 70 years. We know that they were uh, punished in that regard, and they had... Many things happened to them along the way. We can think back with the northern tribes being taken by the Assyrians. We can think of other things that's happened in Israel's history. Someday they will be saved, praise God. At least a remnant of them, according to Romans eleven twenty six, And so all Israel shall be saved. But God's not playing around, is he? My parents weren't playing around when they told me to do something. Even though I didn't hearken sometimes and I didn't obey. Christian... This is a lesson for us. God has been graciously over and over, message after message. I'm preaching to myself too now. Spoken to us about something. And we've kind of treated the Bible like a smorgasbord. We like the good stuff, the sweet stuff, the chocolate, the dessert. We like our favorite food, but Brussels sprouts? Mm -mm. Broccoli? No. And the Brussels sprouts of God's word, the, the spinach, the stuff that we really need, we choose not to have it, do we not? We choose not to take that and to eat it. And that's not right. He wants us to hearken. And that's why I put this phrase on the sign that comes out of verse 13. Let me read it. If you, it and maybe it'll get somebody riding by out there to read it. I don't know. They probably want to go, what is the weird stuff this pastor puts on the church sign? That's okay. Will you not receive instruction to hearken to my words? I didn't have room to say, saith the Lord, but I know that if they'd look at that reference, they might see it. <clears throat> the Lord might be knocking on somebody's heart door mm -hmm. and they're saying, nah, I got plenty of time. I've got plenty of time. Uh, some more convenient time, as the Bible says. Not necessarily. 
Today could be the day when your life is snuffed out. When you're in an auto accident. I pray it doesn't happen. Today could be the day of that dreaded accident at work. Anything can happen. A heart attack. An aneurysm. We do not know what the day holds, do we? It behooves us Christians because we know the word of God. At least we should. We know enough about God's word. Jesus said this. If ye love me, what? Keep my commandments. He wants us to obey him. Does he not? So, <clears throat> Judah's punished. The Rechabites are going to be rewarded as we're going to see that in a few moments. This testimony is the end of the message here. And I know it's not a long message, but I hope that you will take it to heart and think about this word obey that we've seen two times here. He says, And Jeremiah said unto the house of the Rechabites, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, <clears throat> the God of Israel, because ye have obeyed the commandment of Jonadab your father and kept all his precepts and done according unto all that he hath commanded you, therefore saith, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Jonadab, the son of Rechab, shall not want a man to stand before me forever. And we just saw that word already, that they were commanded not to drink wine and not to build houses and not that. And forever. Could it be? Now, I don't Who are these Rechabites? That's kind of mysterious right there. They say that they're related to Moses' father in law, and that was Jethro. And Jethro was part of a clan called the Kenites. Somebody else that's mentioned that's Kenites is in the book of Judges. You remember that woman who drove a tent spike through a man's head? Her name was Jael. Her husband's name was Heber. He was a Kenite. And so they were related to Moses because of his father-in-law. And so it's quite possible that even today, maybe the Bedouins, I don't know, they claim a long heritage. But could it be that even today, people that are living in nomadic lifestyle throughout the Middle East are the bringing about of this very statement? You know, when the Lord comes back, and sets up his kingdom. The Bible says, will he find faith on the earth? That's how, that's how rare it's going to be. That's how bad it's going to be in those times when the Lord comes back to set up his kingdom. Uh, the Bible says that uh, except those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. And that means there are the elect, the, the sliver of the population who have received Christ as their Savior. They're Jews and they're Gentiles. They're the elect, not just one nation. And I believe that God will have, throughout the tribulation period, throughout this church age, there are nomadic peoples that are standing before him, and they will stand before him also during the millennial kingdom. Does he not say the word forever? Yeah. Forever. I have no doubt. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a much about uh, 23 and me or... You know, Ancestry.com, that's fine if you've done that. I don't knock it. Um, I just know that if you shake your family tree, a nut or two will fall out. Just know that. But the fact is, here's God's word. Here's the reward. He was so impressed with their obedience for those 300 years. He says, they're not lack. Jonah Dad will not lack a man to stand before me forever. That is one of the most remarkable statements in the Bible. Amen. You stop and think about that. And we have a same heritage in this regard. When he says to us, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, I, I can take that to the spiritual bank of heaven. I know that I have called upon the name of the Lord and he has promised me that I will live forever. Mm -hmm. When he says eternal life, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's not interrupted. It's not abridged. It's not cut short. It's everlasting. Amen. That's a promise about our salvation. We're going to live in his presence forever. Dorothy quoted a wonderful passage. I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there you may be also. Isn't that a great promise? And so he wants us to be with him. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you can know him today. 
I know I'm kind of preaching to the choir, but because I don't know all the hearts, I do know this, Christian. We have to ask ourselves, am I more like the Rechabites who are ready to obey? That was one of the great heritages of Luann. She left to these kids an example of be obedient to your parents. She taught them that in our Sunday school classes. Are you like the Rechabites who were ready to obey instantly? Or more like Judah? Over and over and over, turning that shoulder to the Lord and not obeying the Lord until it hurt, until the consequences were very grave. Well, we had the uh, reminder recently from the message I preached out of 2 Thessalonians that God will send strong delusion to people to believe a lie. Who did what? Received not the love of the truth. You know that God's love has been put out there? The, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. He has put it out there. So then they are without excuse. Romans 1.20 says nobody will be able to stand before God saying, You didn't tell me. I didn't get the memo. I didn't know about it. Oh, yes. No one will be able to stand before God and have no excuse. He's done everything. Has he not? He sent his son. He died. He died not only just death, but he died the death of the cross. He was willing to go all the way for our, our salvation. We must obey the gospel. That's the starting point. That's the entry point. Now that you're saved, and Christians, like we heard the testimonies, I no doubt Luann was the influential fact of some of my children getting saved. Her teaching. And they got saved in our home, maybe got saved in our church, but I'm so thankful for her impact. But they obeyed the gospel. Obedience to the gospel means you recognize you're a sinner, you repent of your sin, and you call upon the Lord to come into your life and save you. And if you haven't done that, in the words of Dick Traxler, why not? Why not? Let's bow our heads. I hope you're more of a Rechabite than a Judah or an Israelite. That you have Made it a purpose in your heart to be obedient to God. Whatever it might be that the Holy Spirit draws you to do. I'm thankful that we have a godly heritage. People like Lou Ann, Berta Davis. Uh, maybe someday when you have a funeral service here for me, somebody will say, I appreciate pastor preaching the word. I've already heard those words while I'm alive. I like what Luann sang that last song. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. And she's left us a wonderful legacy. This scripture passage gives us a wonderful legacy of the Rechabites who were obedient to their forefathers. Let's be, let's be obedient to the word of God that has been given to us. Father, speak to our hearts this morning. We thank you that we could come and be in church today after so many weeks, now three weeks off. We pray that we won't have to have another shutdown. We just pray that you will just eliminate this COVID thing, Lord. We know you're able. We pray that you will cause it to wane and eliminate it, please. I pray, Father, that you will help the person today that's struggling with this matter of obedience. Obedience to you and the moving of the Holy Spirit. I pray that they will submit and surrender all. Please bless now this invitation we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand. Let's all stand and turn to 489, I Surrender All. Mm -hmm. 